there are two AC system tests you need to perform before you even attempt to service or repair your customer's vehicle. What are they? Stick around, I'll show you in a mighty minute. AC system repair can be costly. It's no wonder then that many consumers are attempting to do the repair themselves. And most figure that if the system isn't blowing cold, it has to be low on refrigerant. So they add some and then add some more. And odds are the refrigerant they're buying contains more than just refrigerant. Many contain sealants and no OEM I know of approves of the use of sealants in their vehicles. And if their repair doesn't work, they come to you. But if you don't perform the two tests I'm about to show you before you start your service, you could risk damage to your equipment or even personal injury to yourself. To protect yourself and your equipment, the first step is to check for the presence of these sealants. The sealant detection test rig is assembled and connected to the high pressure test port on the vehicle. The flow of refrigerant through the flow meter is monitored over a three minute period. If the flow rate drops by more than 30%, sealant is present in the system. Type 2 sealants react with air and moisture to form a solid. Sounds pretty good, right? The problem is where and when it decides to react with air and moisture. A leaking line on your customer's vehicle is one thing, but a line inside your recovery equipment is quite another. And if you're not aware that there is sealant in the system and you open it for repair, the sealant could react in a component like the condenser or evaporator, and that could create a restriction that's going to cause you a comeback. If no sealant is present, we still need to verify that the refrigerant in the system is the correct type. For that, we need a refrigerant identifier. There are a number of them on the market and all are very intuitive to use. Simply follow the directions and prompts on the tool. First, the machine zeroes itself prior to being connected to the low pressure test port on the car. A sample is then taken and analyzed by the tool. Now, don't be surprised if you get a reading of excess air when you're performing the identification test. That's a common occurrence when do-it-yourselfers are attempting to do their own repair. They just don't have the right equipment to do the job. However, if you see, as we did, an indication that there's a refrigerant other than what it's supposed to be in this vehicle, don't recover that into your equipment. It's kind of like getting the flu. First, your machine catches the bug, and then it passes along to every vehicle it comes into contact with afterwards. For more information on the tools I used in today's video, or to learn what to do with contaminated refrigerant or refrigerant containing sealant, visit the websites of Neutronics, the Mobile Air Conditioning Society, and the Environmental Protection Agency. The links to these sites are in the video description. Thanks for watching.